Today in the news, we got cameras and pens, a weird comparison, and a new Oculus. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before we start, let me give a quick shout out to Memory Express. It's their first me day. They have lined up a lot of awesome deals at every department, from PC components, laptops, desktops, monitors, gaming accessories, and more, all for you. I mean me. I mean it's a me day, and it's their three day only sale event running from Friday, February the 8th, that's this Friday, to the 10th, available at all Memory Express locations. You can shop early online starting on Thursday, that's tomorrow, February 7th at 10 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. All right, let's get into the news. First, we have Samsung, which patented some extra features for their next gen pens. With the Galaxy Note 9, we saw Samsung bring Bluetooth to the pen, allowing for some well needed features for the little stick. You could trigger your camera from a distance, use it for media playback, presentation, basically anything you could do with a single button. Well, it looks like Samsung has much bigger future plans for the little pen because they patented a camera system for it. Yep, a camera in a pen. The patent was filed back in early 2017, but it got granted yesterday. Oddly enough, I think that's actually a great idea. Cameras in smartphones are kind of limited to the thickness of the device, and this causes optical zoom to be hard to achieve, so companies often just include a secondary camera. Some companies, like Oppo, did the smart thing, in my opinion, and decided to flip the camera assembly on the side, allowing for a longer barrel for the camera. In this specific patent, Samsung uses uses the length of the pen as the barrel for the camera to allow for the optical zoom system. Now there are a lot of ways this isn't really practical given the size of the current S Pen, the image sensor that would be in it, or even the battery life of such pen, but it's nice to see different and creative ways the pen could be used. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Moving on, we have 3D Mark, their newest benchmark for ray tracing called Port Royale, just got its update to run with DLSS, and they posted a video on it. The first thing you might notice is how blurry the implementation of TAA seems to be. It's so bad that in some sections where the light shines on the floor, it completely disappears for TAA. The overall detail level is just really poor on the left side. If we look at the DLSS side, everything seems crispy and clear. Over on the NVIDIA YouTube channel, a side-by-side -side video is shown, but this time with FPS readings, where DLSS performance stays at around 20 FPS above TAA. Once again, the image seems much clearer on the DLSS side. Now, real quick, let me just give you my opinion on super sampling. I don't care what kind of super sampling is applied. All that matters is the end result, starting with quality of the image and then FPS. If you can boost both of them without weird issues, that's perfect for me, but this comparison seems a little bit biased. Gamers Nexus did a DLSS versus TAA comparison on Final Fantasy 15, and while there was a 20% uplift in performance for DLSS, the flicker and moiré issues that happened were just unbearable to me. Anyways, all of this to say that these comparisons seem to heavily favor DLSS, but it might just be because not enough effort was put into the TAA. And I think that the comment section of that video does agree. All right, let's move on to some VR news. Upload VR discovered some code in the supporting files of the Oculus PC software that confirms a rumored new headset called Rift S. This supports the claim of a TechCrunch report from November that talked about the updated device. This isn't a complete overhaul of the Oculus Rift. What we used to call the Rift 2 got canceled last year. It's more like an iterative upgrade that focuses on accessibility and ease of use. The first change, like many new headsets is inside out tracking. A setting found in the UI allows PC users to select between 50 and 60 Hz room lighting to help with the tracking cameras. The eye distance slider or IDP is also changed and replaced with a software version which I'm not too fond of. One thing that is interesting is this new device might actually get a single high res LCD similar to the Oculus Go compared to the two OLED panels on the Oculus Quest. The reason is because during OC5 last year, the CTO of Oculus stated that the Quest began development before the Go, and if it were designed today, they 
would use a single LCD instead of two separate displays. This is probably because OLEDs are susceptible to ghosting and generally don't have extremely fast panels. Personally, I love VR, but my main issue is all the wires for the tracking system. If this Rift S can properly track the environment and the controllers without external cameras, then I'm all for it. What about you guys? Let me know down below. And that is pretty much it for the news, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. As always, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Don't hesitate to drop a like on your way to the comment section. Stay frosty, and I'll see you guys on the next one. By the way, if you played Apex Legend, let me know, and, I'll, and I might drop my uh, username down below. Take care.